So we built uh, an infrastructure called Found Data, where all of our um, his historical data, so every clinical trial uh, information point gets into that. We have now 20 billion data points on, and we are going to get around 1,500 RCT, uh, randomized controlled trial data, onto the platform. We're adding images, multi-omics, we're, at, we're going to add real-world data, and all the way up to the, the claims and outcomes data, and then upstream to research data. So we have one site, one, one place for real-time analytics, all agentic AI uh, set up. Um, and that we have done ourselves. We do it on the cloud with, with Azure, um, but but we do it. Then we have the the applications and and the variety of uh, of analytical applications are done in partnership. So so we engineer and then we, we design, but we have of course help to do so. Um, this has to be interoperable in a, in a way so it actually could potentially also going to work with academics and other companies. And so we try to design stuff that isn't just bespoke and you know when you work in life science very bespoke is really not what you want you really want stuff that can work with others um the other value stream is when we run our clinical trials we have a quite significant clinical trials portfolio and so the way we do it is i have articulated the vision is to the extent possible the entire value chain should be automated ai powered there's very little need for, and this sounds cynical and i'm not really i hope not a very cynical person but there's, there really isn't a need for a lot of manual interface when you can have it done by AI, except in the loop, as for now at least humans in the loop is required. At a certain point in time, I wonder why that always is a requirement, because we don't, we can't, ex we, we don't have explainability of the human brain, and we assume we always do things, we always do things better, which is not the, not the case. So, so I think we we're going to see all the way from the sign of protocol, the scientific design of protocol, the center of the protocol. The electronic data capture will disappear, will pull data directly out for the electronic health records. It will go directly into a flow. The statistical analysis plan will be automated. The analytical code will be generated. Um, the results will go automatically, and they already do, into study reports. So we do not write study reports manually anymore. So it's all done. We have submitted it to regulators, by the way. We, we have already gone through that validation. And all the way to the submission to FDA and EMA, ultimately that could also be, don't submit reports, submit your data and all your code, uh, uh, and then they can replicate. So that process, um, we're building, and it will come sooner than we believe, uh, including uh, scientific manuscript writing. We have done Gen AI manuscript writing, which you really can't distinguish from human. We haven't submitted them yet. It's only New England Journal of Medicine, AI journal that will accept, uh, as far as I know, uh, Gen AI, but it will come. It's just our resistance. So this will happen and I want to be able to fall from. So that's, the, that's what we want to do. And then to do this in a good way, and now to the second part, we have created, we have first a data ethics council internally, which always, uh, so which is not just an ad hoc discussion. These are big data ethics discussions, such as when we do multimodality analytics, we're going to find a lot of stuff in study individuals that they didn't think they would have. So we're going to be, as we work with predictive algorithms and we start doing multi-omics analytics, we're going to find stuff and we have to relate to that. How do we handle it? And then we have an AI and data and AI governance also in my area that covers all, so every single AI which is deployed in the regulated area and or uh, versus patients in the real life, we have to go through that governance before it's deployed. And there are technical issues, there are ethical issues, there are legal complaint, uh, compliance checks up against EU AI Act and other legislation. So this is a fairly comprehensive and fairly new setup we have, and we all, uh, and which I would highly recommend everyone has. So it's it's trustworthy AI, yeah, but it's, it's more than that. There's, a, so there's the technical validation, there's the ongoing evaluation of the performance, et cetera. And then there's a new area, about which I would call explainability science or decision science, because not all models would be, would be able to explain, but we have to be able to completely track how we make decisions and how decisions are made. And the, the, the less we have humans in the loop, the more decisions aren't made by humans, the more we need to at least track and be able to have that transparency, a little bit to your point. But, but that, and as, if you take an, a concrete example, uh, analytics of images, when then you have AI in the scanner, you have AI maybe in the company that performs that for you, and then you have AI in your analytics. So you now have a series of algorithms and you need to be able to completely, continuously know what happened with those models and how they influence your final decision making. 
So I, I foresee that to be a discipline that we will have to refine as well. So we built um, ourselves with, with big partners and small partners. That's the how. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes faster than than uh, originally thought. You know, a year ago, we didn't think about Agentic AI or infrastructure. Uh, in half a year, Agentic AI will always be a little bit outdated. It'll be something else. Right. So, so, and maybe the final comment here, which, which I also think is, a, is an important theme. The technology evolves so fast. And we, again, when you're in a, the regulated space that, that I sit in, at a certain point in time, we have to lock something and say, this is now what we do and validate that regulators uh, and, and authorities can accept. But the technology keeps evolving. True. So how we balance, and I don't have the answer yet, how do we balance that, that on one hand, the technology evolves so fast, and on the other hand, we need to make sure that it's trustworthy and that we feel safe enough to deploy 